Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name's Claire. I do videos all about hints and tricks and plants and I never remember the last bit, I can only get to care. Claire, welcome back to my channel. It doesn't feel right doing my intro after I've just been mocked. If you're new here, hi, my name's Claire and this is Yoli. I make videos all about house plant care, sharing tips and tricks I've learnt over the years to help keep your plants happy and healthy. And you asked for it, and I already predict it could be chaos, but today you're getting a tour of Ross's plants. Boyfriend, partner, boy, man. <laughs> His collection's grown pretty heavily in the time that we've been together, but he's got some beautiful plants. So yeah, I hope you enjoy it. Let's get into it. So originally me and Ross were going to film his houseplant tour together a couple of weeks ago, but we both ended up getting really ill. I don't know if we had COVID, but we literally couldn't move off the sofa. So Ross has recorded his own houseplant tour that I haven't watched yet. I've only seen what you've seen so far, the intro. Hi, my name's Claire. And so we're going to go through it together. We're going to blind react to it, talk a little bit about his plants and yeah, let's get going. If you're new here. That's it, if you're new here. <laughs> hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name's Claire. This is Yoli. Wink, wink. <laughs> That'll do it. Cool, I'll take it somewhat seriously now, I promise. I know I have got into such a weird rhythm of saying my intro. I think just because I've said it so many times, I've got stuck in a weird pattern, and now I can't get out of it. My mum always pulls me up on this as well and makes fun of me, but yeah. I think I need to switch things up a bit. <laughs> hey there, plant lovers. Claire has informed me that some people have been suggesting that you do a plant tour of, of, of my plants. When I first met Claire, I had one plant. I, I think I've had a few in my time that did not make it uh, through it. And I, I had one plant. When I bought this flat, I tried to get a few more uh, things in it. But then I realised I wasn't particularly great at it. And then I met Claire and suddenly... I've got more plants and you'll see how much that has grown. So Claire and I have been together now since the beginning of the year and you'll see how how much her influence has, has, has spread in the best way possible. And Claire's let me go rogue and do this all by myself because I'm really a novice at this. I, I really have not been involved in plants. Uh, I genuinely, this has all come about since meeting Claire. I kind of see what it's all about though. It's really, really infectious. Yeah, it's addictive. And I said it when we first met and I think now he's coming to see that that is in fact true. I kind of see why everyone gets into it and I am kind of getting into it myself. So. I'm going to show you the first plant, the plant that I had, the plant that uh, Claire had no involvement in. This is the only plant I had when I met Claire. It's quite a big one. Da -da -da -da. This, I don't know what this is. So this one's a Kentia palm, and a Kentia palm's actually one that was on my wish list for a really long time, and I picked one up secondhand when I first moved in here. I absolutely loved it, but I did things a little bit wrong and ended up having to chop the whole plant back. It's slowly regrowing, but it's taking its time. So I'm essentially starting from scratch with that plant. So I think Ross's is looking really, really good on the whole. I heard that it would kind of work well in kind of low light. It's not like my flat is super dark, like it is bright outside. And I've had all my lights on just to make this work. So I don't know. I don't know what, I don't know what the plant this is, but I quite like it. It felt a little bit tropical. Uh, I've. Little bits of it seem to be kind of dying off, but it seems to be pushing through. I genuinely, I, I just, it seems to be surviving. It seems to be going, Claire keeps telling me that it's not dying, that it seems to be looking, I, I seem to be doing okay with it. It has got a little bit of browning, as you can see, towards the tips of some of the leaves. And I think personally, that's probably just down to inconsistent watering and potentially lack of humidity, because I know Ross never runs humidifiers in his flat. Like he's, he's only really in the last kind of eight, eight months started getting into house plants so um yeah i think on the whole apart from that that was looking lovely and conditioned it's putting out new growth as well there are a couple of bits that are kind of dying back but in my in my experience of country palms i'm probably not the best person to ask but that can be quite a normal thing it can be a little bit of a cycle so yeah on the whole i think it's looking really healthy i bought this when i moved in which was nearly four years ago so i think that's pretty good considering i don't really know what i'm doing um but yeah that, that one Maybe this could be a drinking game. You, For every plant I don't know the name, feel free to drink. <laughs> uh, for every plant I get wrong, pronounce wrong, feel free to drink. That could be fun. 
encouraging drinking games on my channel, honestly. Ross doesn't even drink. Next one. Let's go ridiculous. Let's go from one of the biggest plants I have to possibly the smallest one I have. Isn't that adorable? Look at this. Oh, it actually says what it is. We're not going to get this right, are we? It is a Echeveria elegans. I am pretty sure that is an Echeveria elegans. And again, that's how I would pronounce it. I don't know if that's completely right. I've said Echeveria in videos before and people have corrected me. Echeveria, maybe? I don't know. I think that's, that's kind of right. <laughs> this, obviously, is some form of succulent. Seems like the way, doesn't it? But I thought it was cute. Uh, like many of these, this came from another plant swap, and I believe it came from the free table. In fact, I'm sure it came from the free table. I've been now to two plant swaps, and they're really, really fun. And I went to the first one as like a complete, I'm complete novice, having no idea what they were. By the second one, the Scotland one, I was very much invested. So yeah, that was that came from there. Again, another plant swapper. This one, again, is. I don't know the name of these things. This is not going to be your typical video. So this one's a Crassula ovata, commonly known as the jade plant. And I was really fascinated by Ross's jade, actually, because I've got a jade plant in my collection and they're growing really, really differently. As you can see, this one's a lot more tree-like in its structure. And I think that could be down to losing some of the leaves lower down. But also, I'll put a clip in of mine so that you can see. But the, the leaves on his are just a lot smaller and kind of rounder. They're almost like little pennies, whereas... Mine are a lot flatter and longer. I know it can absolutely be down to different environments that the plant's grown in. Again, if you grow this plant outside, it can get quite pink and sun-stressed and quite pale compared to growing it in slightly lower light. Um, but no, I just thought that was quite interesting. I thought this was really, really cool. This, oh, Jade, Jade. I feel like this is a Jade plant because, yes, that's coming back to me. I call it Yoshi because it kind of reminds me of Yoshi from Mario, in case you weren't sure. Um, but yeah, I kind of thought it was fun. It's kind of different, not your normal plant, and I really, really liked it. And again, this came from another plant swap, which is going to be getting a lot of um, pimping in this particular one. But yeah, that is plant number three. What do we have next? So, uh, those of whom who may have been on the channel before and seen me on this one knows that I'm quite a fan of the colour pink. And I have been collecting a few pink plants and also people have been really nice enough to actually bring me pink plants, which is very, very sweet. Uh, Claire bought me this one quite recently uh, and you'll probably see why. Isn't this cool? Again, this looks like something out of Jurassic Park. I think it's really, really cool. It's really pretty. So this is an Aglaonema Fireworks, and I got this one from Grow Tropicals when I did a little Aglaonema haul for myself. I made a full video on Aglaonema, and it's one of my favorite genus of plants. I just think it's amazing. And I saw this one and I was like, oh my God, Ross would go crazy for this plant. So yeah, I'm, I'm happy to see that it's doing well. Obviously it is early days, but Aglaonema is Probably the best beginner plant. It's so ridiculously hardy. It's really adaptable when it comes to different lighting conditions. Um, and yeah, I just thought it was it was the perfect plant for him. Don't know the name. In the comments, this could be a really good one for the comments. I'm sure Claire's doing a thing somewhere um, to tell me what all these things are. I'm making you work for it. I'm sorry, darling. Also, I know I say Aglaonema fireworks, but I don't know if that's just like a common name for the plant. Um, I genuinely don't know, so if there is a kind of more official Latin name for this plant that you know, please do, as Ross said, let us know in the comments. But yeah, that is a pink plant, which I think Claire said is pretty easy. If I remember rightly, this is one that doesn't need too much care. No, as I say, it is a very, very easy to care for plant. It's one that just stays looking really beautiful and tropical and conditioned without really having to care for it that much. As I've already said, it's really adaptable when it comes to lighting conditions. Humidity wise, it doesn't need a huge amount. It can it can pretty much completely dry out in between waterings. It's, in my experience, well, not the most susceptible to overwatering either. So it's just all around a really great plant. But yeah, I really love this one and I can't wait to see if it does more because I just think it's really, really cool. Um, it stands out and yeah, I think it's amazing and it's just super, super colorful. And I just think it's, it's really, really lovely. So yeah, that's this one. This one here, I got this at, funny enough, 
Another plant swap. I am so envious of this plant. So Ross won the Ross won. Oh, that's time for the stuff. Ross won the raffle prize at the Scotland's Another Plant Swap. And this is a philodendron mexicanum, and this is one on my wish list. And I'm sure he'd give me a cutting, but I I'm just because I'm letting him grow up for now. He, it's his plant. He could do what he wants with it, but I may be asking for a cutting at some point because I think it's just gorgeous. I won this in the raffle, actually. Um, so you might have seen that one in the hall. And I think I am doing all right with it because there's some stuff going on up here. There it is. That, that, that looks like a thing. That looks like it's growing, I think. Right? I think it's doing a thing. I think it's growing. So I, I, I don't really know. It was worrying me at the moment because I, I had it up, it's hanging by my window where the, like, the only work place that gets light. And I was really worried that it was going a bit, um, it, was go it was kind of going a bit dead. And then I realized that it's actually just a different color on one side and um, it's a little bit darker, which made me think it was dying. But then actually when I look at it, it's nice and green. So I'm not killing this plant. Um, I just thought I was. It's just that it was pointing, funny enough, towards the sun. I know Ross has said that he's growing this one currently in a hangar, and to be honest, you probably could grow the Mexicanum as a hanging plant. I know I'm kind of doing the silver sword as a trailing plant at the moment, which is a very unconventional way of growing that. But if you wanted to get this plant to kind of scale up and produce those beautiful, beautiful big leaves that it's capable of producing, I will put a picture on the screen of what it looks like mature because it's so stunning. I think you probably would be best off growing this plant on a moss pole as an upright climbing plant. Um, I don't think, uh, in fact, I'm pretty certain Ross doesn't have any moss poles in his collection at the moment. So I feel like I need to get this plant onto a moss pole. I want it to do good things. Uh, so yeah, it seems to be doing rather well. So well done me. I'm not killing a plant. I, ooh, is this another one? Is this a complicated one? Is this one that's... Is it impressive that I've not killed it yet? These, that's pretty much what I'm looking for here, is just some sort of pride that I'm not murdering plants. So I don't think, I've never actually owned the Philodendron Mexicanum, but I don't think it's a particularly difficult plant. If you own this plant yourself, then again, please do let us know in the comments. But in my experience, non velvet leaf Philodendron, just kind of like dark leaf Philodendron, tends to be really quite easy to care for. It's kind of a little bit similar in structure to things like the Yopii and the Philodendron Code 69686, both of which are quite kind of considered quite rare plants, but they are very, very easy to care for. So I would have thought the Mexicana would be similar, but as I say, please do let me know down below. Next one. Should we go for a more common one? I only think we should. Again, guess where I got this one? I'd be surprised if literally every single person has one of these. This is spider plant. Is that its real name? Because they've all got these Latin names that I can never remember. So its Latin name is Chlorophytum comisom variegata because this one's a variegated one. But yeah, spider plant is the common name. But yeah, this was another one. These were going. These were. There's a lot of these going around at the plant swap, uh, and I thought, well, why not? And I kind of said, get one. And I know that they they make like babies, don't they? There's all these things coming off. One of my friends has got one, and like there's just loads of stuff coming on there. So no wonder loads of people have them. Yeah, spider plants throw off little plantlets, like little tiny baby spiders. In fact, my one of mine's doing it at the moment, so I'll put some clips in. But. Oh my goodness, there were so many spider plants when we went to the plant swap and I actually took some of my own there to swap and uh, it, it seems like everybody did the same thing. And at the end of the day, there were loads of them left on the free table and I don't, I don't know what was gonna happen to the plants on the free table if no one took them, but I have a feeling they might have been thrown away. So classic, I ended up packing up all of the ones that I came with and loads more and taking them all home. So. I've managed to pass them along to Ross and I'm just continuing to kind of give lots of spider plant babies to everyone I know. But yeah, this is the spider plant, uh, which really should have a name. I'm a big comic book fan. I'm a huge Spider-Man fan, which I don't know if you can see on there. Uh, and I feel like this one should be called Parker, maybe. And then I can get a few more and name them after all. There's been there's a lot of Spider-Man, so... I feel like that should be called that. His spider plant's actually grown quite a lot since since he first got it. I mean, I think the Scotland plant swap was a couple of months ago now, and it was it was teeny tiny when he first got it, so it's growing very impressively. Once they get going, they are really quite quick. 
Let's go for one that I'm struggling with. This one's having a bad time. I think Claire has helped me bring this one back to life, but this one's Pedro. You've seen Pedro before. Pedro used to be filling this entire pot. And now, as you can see, we have one, what, two stems left? It is not having a good time and it's a shame because i Fitonia. love this plant so this i'm pretty sure is a fetonia pink ruby lime that's its common name i'm not actually quite sure what its latin name is because i'm not that familiar with different types of fetonia again please let me know but I do know that nerve plants can be a little bit tricky. The only way that I've been able to really successfully grow them in my collection is by putting them in a terrarium. And that was kind of like the grand plan, I think, for this plant. We were going to take some cuttings and we were going to put it, like put different sections of it into a terrarium. And it's hard to know exactly what's gone wrong here. I did have a look at the roots of this plant the last time I was at Ross's house and I mean, half the soil, it was kind of hard to tell. The other half, it looked okay, but because their root system is so spindly, it's, it can be quite difficult to tell when the roots aren't doing good things, just because they're, they're quite difficult to see. So I would predict potentially a little bit of overwatering. I know it is in, it has been kept in kind of an elbow pot that doesn't have drainage, and I'm, I have told Ross to take all of his plants out to water them. And I'm, I'm not sure if he's done it every time with this plant because this was one of his very early plants, I think. Um, we have, however, taken some cuttings, so hopefully Pedro will live on. I called it Pedro because it reminded me of The Last of Us. Uh, Claire and I were obsessed with this when it first came out and uh, it reminded me of that. We got this from Hugo and Green. Oh, it was a Hugo and Green one, I completely forgot. Okay, so it wasn't a super early on plant, just one that's gone downhill quite quickly. I'm hoping Claire has suggested, I, she, we, when last time she was here, she was doing some plant care and, and helping me out a little bit. And this one, put a bag over it for humidity. So we did a bit of this. Actually, although some of the rest of the plant has died back, the section that's there is looking pretty healthy. I don't know if it's still been in the bag up until this point, but putting a plastic bag over plants to just kind of essentially create a little terrarium environment can be a really good way to just kind of boost humidity levels and kind of keep things stable if a plant is struggling and for a plant like this that was kind of my gut instinct so I'm glad to see that that little bit's looking okay hopefully hopefully it bounces back terrariums apparently they like humidity they like a bit of that so I'm thinking this might need to go into a terrarium because I would hate to lose this last one I've got one in water propagating it's not dead so I'm hoping that that might be right. Again, that was another Claire suggestion. Anything that sounds smart wasn't me. It was Claire suggesting it. But yeah, I, I really love this one. I think he's absolutely awesome. And I'm really, really hoping that Pedro doesn't die. But looking at this, they, he's definitely perked up since popping the bag on it. So yeah, if you have one of these, apparently suffocate it. If any of you are really clued up on Fetonia or have had a lot of success growing them in your own collections without having them in a terrarium, please, please, please let us know some care tips because, as I say, they are not my speciality. They're not my favourite types of plants, so I just haven't had, I think I've had one in my collection over the years. Is that right? I think I've had one. Um, but yeah, any care tips at all would be much appreciated. But yeah, so this one's Pedro. I really hope I can keep him going. I really hope he was just adjusting a little bit and he doesn't die on me because I love this one. That is actually something to take into consideration as well because most of Ross's plants have been, most of these have been acquired within the last kind of like eight, eight, nine months. They will have gone through a period of acclimation and sometimes that, that acclimation period isn't always as quick as you think it might be. For some plants it might be a couple of weeks and for other plants it might genuinely be a few months. Like since I've moved to my flat here I have had some really really long periods of acclimation with some of my plants that I didn't expect. For some of them I swear to god it's taken about kind of six months. So. And that's definitely something to bear in mind, although it might feel like these are things that he's done wrong. It could just literally be them adjusting to their new environment and taking in their new conditions. I wanted a big trailer one. I, want, I think they're really, really fun and I was going to grow it and I was going to get it to wrap around some things. And I think this one might be the one. This has grown, like it was quite long. I didn't grow this all the way. It was quite long. Uh, however, look at this bad boy. And again, I don't know what this plant's called. I'm really sorry. I'm a bad plant person. I just like the look of them. I think they're fun. Uh, but yeah, here we have this one here. 
very green, very traily. So this is an Epipremnum aureum, commonly known as the Golden Pothos. Literally perfect beginner plant. It grows, as you can see, very, very, very quickly. It's amazingly adaptable to different lighting conditions. I know Ross is keeping this one. If you look at the shelves just on the left of him, he's keeping that kind of hanging down on that shelf. That's kind of a pretty low light spot, but it is a plant that so long as it's been able to kind of adjust to lower lights over, over a period of time, it will do very well in pretty much any lighting conditions. And since I've got it, and like this one is quite fun. Look at this. Look at all this. It's done a lot of this since I got it as well. A lot of this sort of LBN sort of stuff has happened since then, which is really fun. I like these ones because they go quite quick and it makes you feel like you're quite good at this. And what was fun about this is that this one goes, so as I said before, my flat is super, super dark. Uh, I pretty much have all my plants like at the window because it's like the only place that really gets light. It's quite overlooked. So the sun comes in for about an hour. The rest of it is really like overcast. Like it is light outside, all my lights are on. However, I've got this kind of round the side and there's a little bit of light that comes through, but it's absolutely fine. Um, so this plant, yeah, quite good for some sort of, for lower light, which is quite nice because I reckon not everyone is quite as lucky as Claire to live in sort of such a nice and sunny sort of place. So if you have got one that doesn't mind a little bit of crappy light, here's your one. Yeah, that's very, very true. I mean, I when I was looking for places to live, I chose my flat because of the light. It was an absolute priority for me because I do have so many plants. But it's been really interesting actually kind of decking Ross's place out a little bit with plants because he... Although like he does have some natural light, it really it's very kind of it, there's other buildings opposite it. And I think it gets about an hour of sunlight in the morning. And apart from that, it really is quite dark all day. So it's been very interesting kind of figuring out how to grow them and how to make them thrive in, I guess, more of just like a normal home environment, because most people will. Well, I mean, the majority of us, I would have thought, would live somewhere and then get into plants instead of decide you're getting into plants and then get a place based on that I don't know um but yeah that's been quite interesting but yeah I really love this one because I think it's really really cool it's growing like mad I want to wrap it around stuff hang it down from stuff I can't maybe you can have it on my fridge over there hang it down there add a bit of green to it but yeah I think you are quite cool uh again I don't know what it's called it's a green one it's a green one <laughs> here's a rogue one this is the terrarium that I made it's a very bad terrarium because it's the first one I made but Claire bought me a skull jar and I thought it was really, really cool. And I overfilled it. I put way too much of the soil and stuff into it. Oh, I feel like I could be doing Hamlet. And because I am dead, I can take off my head to recite Shakespearean quotation. Oh, God. Not then before Christmas for anyone that's interested. Uh, but yeah, so anyway, uh, there is a plant in there and it is red underneath. What you might be able to see is... Will it say it? Will it show? Oh, I know. It lines up. We had, in fact, you can, oh, can you see it a bit more? Yes, now you can see it a bit more. That was a better idea, Ross. So you can't actually see it very clearly, but that is a cutting of my now non-existent Begonia Thurstonii. It was a plant that oh, I spoke about in videos before. It was ridiculously rooted into, I was propagating it in moss and it was ridiculously well rooted. I took about four hours to go through and pick all the moss off the roots. It, I mean, I didn't do it for a video because it would have been the most boring thing in the world. It took me ages and the plant just went into complete shock afterwards and within the space of a couple of days dropped all of its leaves. I have got some sections of it back in my prop box, but very sadly, I did lose quite a lot of that plant. But I gave Ross a little cutting and he's got it in the top of that skull. And it actually looks really cool in person. The camera's not picking it up properly. So. There's a plant in there. So even though I kind of made a bit of a mess of it, it seems like it's thriving, but I thought it was very cool. But I think it would definitely look better if I had less in it and it would light up a bit more because it's such a cool jar. Uh, I really like skulls, which is a weird thing to say, but isn't it cool? So yeah, that's another one in there. Bit of a rogue one. What should we do next? I'm gonna save the one I'm looking at till last because it's one of my favorite ones. I think I might do that one. So let's go with a little one. Oh. Right, this is a, doesn't have a name on it, this, Guess where this came from? This came from another plant swap. Emma gave me this one. So that one's a little Hoya Rosita. And again, Hoyas are fabulous when it comes to beginner plants. They are so hardy, so resilient, amazingly adaptable when it comes to light. Again, I just love the Hoya Rosita and it's one that I actually don't have. 
I don't have the Hoya Rosie to sew again. You know what I'm thinking. <laughs> It's just fun. It seems to be growing. I don't think it's killing. It's a nice little one. You can see it is starting to put out a little tendril and I would say the best thing to do probably at this stage is either to chop that back to encourage a little bit of growth to fill out kind of further down the plant, get it a little bit bushier or get it onto a trellis and, and wind that round the trellis and that will kind of encourage encourage it to put out some new leaves. So I will see what Ross wants to do and maybe we can do that soon. It's not doing a great deal. But it's not do it's not dying on me either, which seems like I think I think that's a win. If if plants aren't dying on me, then I think that's absolutely good. <laughs> I can't think of what I'm saying, but thank you, Emma, because it was nice for you to give it to me. And at some point it'll do a thing, and then when it does, I'll let you know. Right, here's another one. This one's weird. Claire gave me this one. It's just been like this. Just limp. So I've been told that this will do this for a while. I've been told that it might even just die, but the roots will do a thing. And then at some point it will grow into a really cool plant. So this is one that came in the goodie bags from another plant swap, and it is a Monstera standaliana. And oh my goodness, once this plant gets going, it grows really quite quickly, but propagating this plant is, oh my goodness, it takes such a long time. I got some cuttings of the Monstera standaliana from the first plant swap, which was over a year ago now um, and the woman that I got them from basically said that she'd been trying to propagate them for I think about five or six months they hadn't developed roots at all and she said she'd swapped them from perlite to sphagnum moss and like maybe I should try it a different way and I got them home and I put them I put them into sphagnum moss and I put them in my cabinet and I waited about nine months. Honestly, it is the slowest plant in the world to produce roots. And meanwhile, it was starting to put out new growth as well. It was really weird. But once it eventually did form roots, they just kind of, they, they went and they spread very quickly and I potted it up and now my plant is about that big. So yeah, it does take a while to get going and I wouldn't be surprised if he lost that leaf. Sometimes they do drop the main leaf, but so long as he keeps the moss hydrated, keeps it somewhere fairly light and warm, bit of humidity if possible, then I would have thought <laughs> this time next year. You never know. It's been about a month since I've had this. It's done nothing. It doesn't look like it's dying. So again, is that just watching this flap about? It's a bit, it's a bit sad, isn't it? <laughs> I don't even know what it's called, but it's just another plant that we have that's hopefully going to do a thing eventually. Oh, should we go for ones that Claire didn't get? Because there's two here. One's going better than the other. Let's go with Soil. one first. So, my one of my neighbours was uh, put on our, we got a little group that you could, you know, on, on Facebook or whatever to say what's going on with the residents and all that jazz. And... Uh, they did have some plants that they didn't want, and I thought, well, like it. I know a girl that likes plants, so she might be able to help me out with this. So, I have a Venus flytrap, which is dying, <laughs> and I don't know why. So I would really like to get more into carnivorous plants. I've got some carnivorous wishlist plants at the moment, but I don't currently have a Venus flytrap. But the one thing I do know about it is that it is really, really sensitive to the water that you give it. I know lots of people that have owned this plant that I've spoken to have said that it really appreciates distilled water. And at the moment, Ross is just watering it with standard tap water. He does live in the middle of kind of like quite a big town. So I would have thought that the water kind of treatment chemicals are probably quite harsh and that could be part of the reason. The other thing I would say as well is that he does, so he bottom waters this plant, the little kind of dish that it's in, he fills that up and he fills it up fairly regularly. Um, and although I'm pretty sure it is a plant that likes to stay fairly consistently moist, there is a big difference between consistently moist and saturated and soggy. And if you just look at some of the top of the plant there, it's quite dark and it, it looks a little bit rotten. So I would very much encourage him, and in fact, I'll probably be doing it. I would very much encourage him to check the roots of that plant. But it seems to come back. So every now and then something pops out because it's looking a little bit, this one's not going all that well. I probably shouldn't have shown this one off. Look, it's going a bit black here. And I don't really know why. People tell me that these are hard work, so maybe I'm just over ambitious, but they were giving them away and I thought, well, why not? However, look at this. I didn't know this was a thing, but it's flowered. It's flowered. Oh my goodness, I don't think I've ever seen one flower before. Now, someone can tell me if that's cool or not, because I kind of thought it was interesting, because this one just came out of nowhere, this, this wasn't there when I got this. I would have thought that maybe it's just, I mean, some sections of the plant have died off, maybe like 
a little bit of the roots have started rotting or maybe it is just the water thing. I'm, I'm not entirely sure. I need to get in there and have a look. How do I bring it back? Or is this supposed to happen? But yeah, so this is it. So that's another one. Another one I went rogue on. Not going too well. However, I have another one. It came as a pair. We have this one, which is a, says it on here, a Saracenia, Saracenia, Saracenia. Sure, why not? So this is one of my wishlist plants. This is a trumpet pitcher plant. And again, it's a carnivorous plant. I just think it is the coolest thing in the world. Ross's is fairly small at the moment, but if you, uh, again, I'll try and find a picture and put it on the screen, but if you look at pictures of them and they get kind of big and mature, they are just, oh my goodness, I don't know what it is about them, but they, they're just the coolest thing in the world and I really, really want one. This one's quite fun and it's been doing really, really well and it's been growing quite nicely and seemingly easier to deal with. It's also, if you look at it from funny shapes, it's got, well, we all know it's got a funny shape, so... <laughs> Again, this one has been a lot easier to keep. I've been, I've been told these guys like being constantly kept in water. Again, I don't think constantly growing in water is perhaps the right thing to say. I think similarly to the Venus flytrap, it is, I'm pretty sure, a marshland plant and typically grows kind of in quite boggy conditions. So keeping it in something moist is good. Again, wet, I would watch out for. So I will be encouraging Ross to just keep an eye on the soil. Again, I don't currently have this plant in my collection though, and his is doing really well. So... Part of me is like maybe he should just keep doing what he's doing. I don't know. What do you guys reckon? Not sure. I love this one. I think it's quite cool. A bit different. I think the Venus flytrap might be on its way out. Let's see. This. Which I love this one. And I'm pretty confident you're going to see another one that's further along. So this is an Alocasia Aslandii. And this was a tissue culture plant that came from, I think, the last London plant swap that I went to. Again, the goodie bags. Um, and I don't have an Alocasia Aslandii and I absolutely love it and I grew, I, I basically took took this little one and I grew it in my cabinet and Ross was admiring it and it does have kind of pink veination and I was like, I think, I think it would make him happy and again it's an Alocasia that is growing really really well for him. When it left me it only had one leaf and it's now got two. I was kind of wondering about how this one would acclimate to his space because, as I say, it had been in my cabinet here, getting very high humidity, very high heat, very high light. Um, but yeah, it's transitioned to life at his house really, really well. As I say, it's got a new leaf, so it must be happy. This, by the way, I had one leaf and another leaf has come out in my care. And that seems to me like an impressive thing. It's in Pond, I think, which is... Good thing. That's the thing I've learned. That's the thing I did not know existed until meeting Claire. And I'm really hoping it more happens with it because I think it's quite a nice, fun one. And I've seen a few of the others and they get quite big, which would be really, really cool if I can grow them into that. Uh, but yeah, this is... I really should have learned more of these names. This is just not informative. This is me just going here. Here's a plant. Look at it. Look at it. Uh, anyway, look at it. Look at it. Here's a plant. <laughs> so, my, having looked at them, they might be... They must be in the same family, right? But... How cool is this? Again, Claire did most of the work on this one. I got this one when it was three and a, three and a half leaves. Yeah, so this is a plant that used to be in my collection. This is the Alocasia capria red secret. And Ross is totally right. This is Alocasia, same genus. Um, very similar kind of visually in some ways to the Aslandii. Um, and I loved the Alocasia capria red secret. This one was actually given to me by my friend. Oh, sorry, got something in my eye. My friend Memo, who's Houseplanty Goodness on YouTube, and I really love this plant, but it's one that, I don't know, like, I I feel like I just wasn't appreciating as much as I could have been. It was just kind of in my cabinet, it was growing, it was doing pretty well, and Ross saw it and he was like, oh my god, this plant's amazing, and I was like, wow, it's, it is clearly going to make you happier than it's making me, so here's your first allocation, let's see how you get on. Um, and yeah, it's doing it's doing wonderfully. It's putting up beautiful growth. Uh, the reason I, I wanted this one um, is because I think they look a bit like turtle shells. And now I've got four. We all know what that means. I now have Michelangelo, Donatello, Leonardo and Raphael. Because I was a big fan of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, as I think many people were. And I think this reminds me of them. But I think they're really, really cool. They're, they're like, they've got this really cool kind of texture. Yeah, look at that new leaf. It is so shiny and purpley. It's, oh, it's stunning. Their new leaves are amazing. Like, they do fade a little bit as they kind of mature and harden off, but the new growth just blows my mind. So metallic. They are a little bit pink on the other side, which is nice. 
pretty low maintenance, to be honest. They're in this pond stuff. Uh, it seems to be going quite well. Every you know, when it dries out, add a bit more. I think this is a, is one of my favourite ones actually. I love this. I think it's really really cool. And I really hope I can keep it going. This one I absolutely love, and I feel like I'm absolutely smashing it. I again, they got this from the first plant swap. We met a really lovely lady. Uh, this one is. I can't remember, the, it's got her name, but it's called a love plant. So this is an Oxalis triangularis, and I've actually never owned this plant before. As you guys know, I'm not, I'm not massively drawn to the colourful plants. For some reason, I can find like pink and purple just a little bit jarring in my space, and I don't know why that is. It's just a weird visual thing that I've got. Um, but this plant, when we first got it back from the plant swap, I'm sure Ross will kind of go into a little bit of detail, but it had it had loads of kind of big beautiful leaves that were snapped by Yoli's tail pretty much the second we got home and I wasn't sure how to get it to bounce back so I did as you can see put it into semi-hydro it got into my cabinet and it bounced back really really quickly and again I was a bit worried about the transition going from my place to Ross's place but it's it's obviously done amazingly and it's giving him so much new growth so if it continues to fill out at this rate I think it will be a really big beautiful full plant in no time it's been growing loads. I, I'm sure three or four new leaves have come since having it, which is, that's fun, isn't it? If you get a plant and you're not that great at it, the fact that they grow more makes you feel pretty good about it. So I really, really love this one. I love the colour. I love it. And it, it goes up and down a lot, which is quite sweet. Add a bit of water and then soon it starts to go up. It is a really good one at letting you know when it needs a drink, because like Ross just said, it does kind of really flop over, almost like kind of in the same way that Calathea's curl. It's a very dramatic plant. But I've seen people do amazing time lapses of them when they give it a bit of water and then it rehydrates because it just looks amazing. It literally just kind of goes whoop straight back up again. So yeah, it's again for that reason potentially quite a good beginner plant. I don't know. I haven't owned the plant for long enough in my own care to know whether or not it would be good in other ways to begin a plant. But being able to monitor watering that way is surely a, a perk. <laughs> I think this is a really, really cool plant. I'm sure its nickname is the love plant. I didn't just nickname it myself. But yeah, I think it's really, really pretty. It's got a really cool colour to it. Can it, is this? I hope this is coming out on the screen. I'm not as good as this player as this, am I? This isn't, I need to get better, right? You get the idea. This one's gone, mm, I'm, not, I'm not entirely sure I'm a fan of this one because it's a pain in the ass. But it is quite cool. And as you can see, it ticks my pink vibes so this is i can't remember the name it's, it's some type of tradescantia again i'm not massively clued up on tradescantia i've got two different types in my collection neither of which are the purpley ones um if i can find the name then i'll i'll put it on the screen but otherwise again let me know in the comments because i'm not entirely sure um and tradescantia although it can be a really fantastic beginner plant can go downhill quite quickly when it starts to go and I'm actually I'm going through that with one of mine at the moment mine had thrips and I I, I kind of almost overnight looked back at it and it was just like vroom, and loads of its leaves had died off so if I were Ross here I would probably be taking a few cuttings and water propagating them because it's a very fast plant to root and then you could plant them back into the soil and get a lovely full plant going again. We have checked it for pests and I don't think it is pest related. I think it's probably just acclimation related and potentially not staying as on top of watering as he could. I'm not sure. Uh, typically it tends to be a watering related issue with Tradescantia if it's not pest related because they're again very adaptable when it comes to light. There was quite a bit of this when I first got it and then it started to die and I've had to like, I trimmed a lot of the dead stuff back. It used to be quite dangly. Claire was telling me that like some plants just don't like it when you take them to a new home. That's a pain in the ass, isn't it? I just, I love that again, I'm hoping you can see this, I think you can. The pink in it is really, really cool on the underside. But I'm just hoping that it's just settling in and it'll be good in the end because that'll be quite nice and I like this one when it works. When it works. You may have seen this one. We got this. Where did we get this? Well, did I actually, I think Claire was going to take this to a plant swap, but I bagsied it. So this is a, I always call it the purple passion plant. So that's its common name. I'm pretty sure its Latin name is Gyanura. Orantiaca. I'm very used to typing that when I do names for videos, but I, I very rarely say it out loud, so I think that's what it's called. Um, and this was a cutting from my friend's plant that he gave to me, and it rooted really, really quickly. And I know I've already said how I feel about plants that, I mean, this one's actually, fun fact, technically not purple, it's actually green, but it's, it's little hairs all over it make it look purple. 
but it just wasn't ticking boxes for me. It wasn't making me that happy. So I did decide to chop it up and take it to another plant swap. And on the morning of the plant swap, Ross was like, oh my God, what's this plant? And I was like, it's the purple passion plant. And he was like, oh my God, I really love it. So that was the first, I said trade, that was the first thing I got rid of that day. I gave it to Ross and it's, it's doing really well. The root system it had did go a little bit. I think it dried out too much and it went a little bit kind of mushy. So we chopped it up, we started again. It rooted again very, very quickly. It was potted up, I think about three weeks ago and then went to his place and it's, it's perked right up and it's now looking really good. It's got these really like cool hairs, which I didn't realize because I just thought it was pink, but these like little hairs. So when you kind of move it in the light, it catches and it can look all pink or it can look all green let me is this oh so that green will it work will it work oh you're kind of getting the oh there there we go there yeah you oh, see how fun's that they are also when they flower they're very interesting because they produce lovely flowers that then kind of turn to almost like little pom-poms like you know when you see like a da uh, what is that the right word dandelion yes dandelion that's that's died off and it makes those little what, what are they called do I, am I being really dense about this? Am I having a mind blank? Um, but those things that you blow and you make a wish when you're a child, that's what I mean. They kind of look like little ones of that. And I'm pretty sure that again, it's the same principle. I'm pretty sure you can get seeds from that. And I assume grow the plant from seed. Um, but yeah, it looks really pretty when it happens. And I feel like, I don't know if Ross knows that that happens, but I feel like that's something that will make him quite excited because that's quite fun. But yeah, I think this is a really, really cool plant. I absolutely love this one. And I'm really hoping I can, I, I don't kill it. That's what I want. Let's move on to Freddy. I know that's not his real name, but he's what I've called it. This is Freddy. Uh, we got this one from Hugo and Green. So this is a Calathea ornata, which is commonly known as the pinstripe Calathea. And I, like, without being, and I so don't mean this to be patronising, but I am amazed that this plant is doing so well for Ross because, as I say, it is, it's a plant that can be such a drama queen. Like, when I first started getting into houseplants, I cannot count the amount of Calatheas that I killed. And it is just loving life at his house. And I mean, again, like I've already said, he doesn't, he doesn't run humidifiers. His conditions kind of haven't been adapted in the same way as, like, mine have, for example, for plants. Um, and I know when we first got this plant, some of you in the comments were saying like, oh my God, he's got a Calathea. That's a little bit risky, is it not? And it's potentially out of all of them doing the best. And this is why I say like, firstly, different people's environments just tend to suit certain types of plants more. And some people are just naturally going to be good at looking after certain types of plants and other people aren't going to get it for a while or aren't going to be quite as good. Because as I say, when I first started out, this would have been a real struggle plant for me. And yeah, Ross is doing fantastically with it. This is such a cool plant. It's gone bonkers. It's gone absolutely mad since I've had it. I'm so chuffed with myself because it is shooting out leaves a week. There are two new ones, which uh, hopefully you can see there. And then this one, is, there's another one poking out. There's that one. Yeah, there's one there. So these are two are just poking out. It is going absolutely mad. I'm starting to think it might need a big pot. Like you can almost see it moving um, when it when you point it towards the light. I know that all plants do that. Or this one, like I need to film a time lapse of it because I think it would look absolutely amazing if you like rotate it and then it will just turn really, really quickly. Yeah, so it's commonly known as the prayer plant for that reason because its leaves will kind of turn and open and face the sun and then at night time they'll close back up again. But as you can see, Ross hasn't been rotating this plant, which isn't a bad thing. Like you don't have to if you don't want to, but if he wants to achieve lovely even growth all the way around then it would be a good idea to turn it just because it will otherwise just face the sun and stay there meaning that its growth is a little bit uneven and i named it freddy because it just went i think it was called a praying or like a clapping sort of thing like that i think the name is like that and that reminded me of freddie mercury doing the whole you know anyway big thing that. so i really think this is a really really awesome plant and obviously it ticks a few boxes because you can see it's a bit pink I should be talking about how I care for them, really, shouldn't I? But I'm not really doing that. Um, this one, I remember, the reason I've that remembered is that apparently this one actually requires a tad more care than some of the other ones because typically my criteria has been things that are 
harder to kill, I suppose. Yeah, so this one does like its soil to be consistently moist. It doesn't particularly like to dry out, but I think for that reason, again, similarly actually to what we said about the carnivorous plants, it can mean that it is quite susceptible to overwatering because a lot of the time people will hear consistently moist and they will kind of think, oh my God, well, I need to water it all the time and then they'll overwater. And that'll cause root rot and then the plant will kind of spiral quite quickly. So striking the right balance is very important, but Ross is obviously doing this very, very well. So hence why I'm a little bit more proud of this one, simply because apparently it's more intermediary. More intermediary? Intermediate. It's more of a challenge. Ta -da. This is a bit of a classic, isn't it? This, and again, I think I know the name, because it's a string of hearts. Well, look at that, that's a pro thing Claire taught me, it's focusing on it. I love these, I think these are really, really cute. The string of hearts, again, is doing amazingly. Like, although I, whenever I'm at Ross's, I will kind of have a look over his plants because he's getting quite a lot now, there are some that I maybe don't check quite as much. And typically the string of hearts is very, very low maintenance. You don't have to do a lot to keep this plant happy. Again, very susceptible to overwatering, but that is that is just kind of with the nature of it being a semi-succulent. But I don't think I've properly taken a look at this plant since it left my care and went into Ross's because after the plant swap, I was looking after it for a little while and I was kind of attempting to acclimate it and then, um, and then yeah, I gave it to Ross, but it's, it's giving beautiful growth and it's not always the fastest grower in the world. So yeah, I'm so glad that's doing so well for him. This is a strange thing to say, but I like the fact that they're kind of, it looks like something that should be bigger, but miniature. And I quite like that. That's how I like my dogs, kind of squidgy and small. This was, again, another another plant swap one. I this is one I set out for, actually. I really wanted one of these. I think this was two merged into one, and I originally called these ones Helena and Perry after Helen Bonham Carter and Christina Perry. Um, so I now, I guess it's Helena Perry. Again, I like a lot of them. They haven't really required a great deal of care. Just stick a finger in it. If it's dry, water it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always going to make my life fun when it comes to editing. <laughs> Rude but accurate. Uh, so this one kind of works. So I like this a lot. Here's one. Here is the, here's the dangers of knowing Claire. <laughs> you end up with quite a large plant. So this is going to be, this is going to be, this isn't going to be graceful. Well, I got a yucca plant. That's a simple one, isn't it? We were in, where were we? We were in Wales. We went to Wales. Did we see Wales? Yes, we popped into a b and I think it was, which I'd never been in one of those before. It just sells everything. And Claire saw these and just went and essentially said, you need to have a yucca plant in your life. Uh, I said, I really don't. I said, our car is full. Apparently I did. So yeah, they had a massive selection of houseplants in this b and I don't have a b and where I'm from, so I just got very, very excited about this. And I think it was only about £16 or something. And I know the price on yucca plants is massively, massively dropping, but I saw this one, I saw the price of it. I've got a yucca plant, but it is, again, a really good one for beginners. So I convinced Ross that he needed one and we got it into, we got it into his car with our suitcases and lots of other stuff. And it was a little bit squashed in there, but... I think it looks beautiful and I think it's doing really, really well. It could probably do, he's got it kind of next to a window at the moment. I would probably put it more in front of the window just to kind of achieve a little bit more growth because it is typically a highlight plant. It can be kind of uh, over time acclimated to cope with medium lighting conditions, but I think it would grow better if it was receiving slightly higher light. Uh, but I think it looks beautiful. It looks really lush and conditioned. I just love a yucca. I've had this now since it was mid-June, so that's like two months since I've had this plant, and it's done all right. I don't know if it's growing. It's certainly not dying, which I think, again, is my key thing. It's, like, it's kind of had having a tree here. It just seems to require a little bit of water every now and then, like once a week, I think, so far, is what I've been doing. I popped it by the window. This isn't really doing it a lot of justice, but I don't really know how to best uh, show you this one. So instead, here I am behind a yucca plant. Yucca. Oh. I've saved these till last intentionally. These come as a three. One of these I've got a feeling is called a Porthos, Porthos. which are, or that's entirely possible that that's the name of one of the uh, three musketeers. So this is a Marble Queen Pothos, an Ace Canathus Marmoratus, and a Hoya Croniana Super Silver, all pr propagating. They've been propagating for a very long time, um, but roosting together in sphagnum moss. I named these 
Aragorn, Gimli, and Legolas after you know that. Oh, so big. Certainly two of these have gone really, really well. So this one has got absolutely mad. I've This one's just so much fun. It's been growing all over the shop. I'm desperate to try and make it like trail down. Uh, again, all I, 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 this is currently in moss and I'm pretty confident it needs to be taken out because Claire told me that in three months, from, from, from three months of this, it needs to go into a pot. It's been nice. <laughs> Uh, this middle one, I'm not sure, but I like it. Uh, but this is this one's been going a little bit. It's got a little bit better since uh, I since I got it. This one's taken a little bit longer to adjust. Also, me and Ross always have a debate about whether or not blue plants actually exist. And looking at the Hoya Croniana Super Silver, I know that obviously it's not completely blue, but I think the splashy silvery bits on its leaves are blue. I think they're blue. I see them as blue. And I'd be very interested to know what you guys see them as. So settle this debate once and for all. Do blue plants exist? And is that blue? I think it's blue. <laughs> so again, I'm so sorry that I don't know the actual names of these. And then there's this one here, because this one's quite fun. Again, it's obviously got some funky stuff going on. There we go, you can see a leaf. But this was doing nothing. And then suddenly, these appear. So it's growing... I don't know if it's coming it separately. I don't know if these are separate plants, but I've now managed to get three different ones. But the roots on this one, this is why I think probably Claire was right, it needs to be put into something. Uh, but yeah, I think you can see that a little bit. Now, the reason why I like this one, uh, the reason why I said this till last, is because these uh, were the three that Claire bought me these on our first date. Uh, so she bought me these three cuttings on our first day, which was quite easy. There is a story to that one, which I'm not going to share here, but there is a funny story about how these ended up and the, the whole first day. I'm pretty sure I have actually shared that story in a repot and chat or plant chores video fairly recently, like within the last month. I can't remember exactly which one it was, but if you're interested, go back and find that. <laughs> And I definitely thought this was some sort of test. Uh, so the fact that these are doing really well makes me really happy. But I love the fact that they're still there. And it's uh, it's just nice that I've got a nice memory of that day. Not, not a memory, a momentum of the day. I've got plenty of memories of it all. It's just very, very cool. And again, really easy to maintain. I literally just check the moss. And if the moss is dry, add water. That's it. And it's been going really, really well. So hopefully it continues to do that one. Like I say, really, really chuffed that it's going good. That is my plant tour. In fact, there are two more. I took two to work. I've got a succulent and, oh, I'm going to remember the name, a Tradescantia zebrina. I've got that. Very, very cool pink plant. In fact, I have a video of that one. I can uh, send that to Claire and add her into it. That's at my office because I wanted to brighten that up a little bit. So yes. And actually, there's uh, a few more in Claire's cabinet. She doesn't trust me with them yet. There's these really cool pink plants that Tash bought me uh, at the Scotland Plant Swap. And there's another couple in there as well that I think are being looked after. So they're, they're doing a thing. So these are the other plants of Ross's. I have currently got them, so I thought I would show you them. There is uh, this one, I think, is called an Erosina herbstii. Um, it's got amazing pink stems and this is the one that you got from Tash and it is growing like crazy. Like it was, I think about that big when we first put it in the cup, they're just propping in water at the moment and it is growing like ridiculously. It really reminds me of the um, Autonanthera party time just in the way that it grows and its structure of growth. So yeah, I am. Um, I'm not keeping these for any particular reason. I just thought they'd probably do well in the cabinet when they were adjusting. So I will be sure to pop them up, give them to Ross soon. And then this is just a little Tradescantia Nanook, Nanook, Nanook. Uh, again, a, a purpley Tradescantia. It's got beautiful purpley undersides to its leaves. Um, and not necessarily my sort of plant, but he loves it. Um, I can't remember, I, that could have been a free table. I actually can't remember. Um, and then the one that we got from Lydia was the Begonia Maori Haze. And there's actually two sections of this in here and one is for me and one is for Ross. So again, they're all, all rooting well in there, but I just think like the iridescence on those leaves is incredible. They're like purpley, silvery. I just think they're amazing. So yeah, those are, those are the other ones. My God. So what's that? Was that 23? So I've gone up 23 plants in eight, nine months. 
that's an obsession. Oh, we missed one behind me. There's another 24, 24 plants. I hope everyone dug this. I don't know what to say. Now, I'm sure Claire will say, like, share, subscribe, hit the bell, ding, ding. That'll do it. Jungle Haven. Stay sexy, plant lovers. Cool. So yeah, that was that was Ross's house plant tour. If you'd like updates on his plants as well, then we can absolutely maybe in, I don't know, like six months time or something, go and do a, a little updated tour. Um, but I mean, I enjoyed watching that. I, I, although, as I say, I, although I see his plants quite a lot, it's nice to actually be able to be taken through them in detail like that. And I, there were some things that I'd never seen before that I noticed there. So yeah, I really hope you enjoyed this video. As Ross said, if you liked it, please make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, have a lovely day, and I will see you in the next video. Sexy part lovers.